time for another review and um, I was absolutely blown away by the response to my first ever review. Thank you very much for your subscriptions. If you haven't done it yet, hit that subscribe button. So what we're going to look at, well, the same as last time, but some extra bits. Deep breath. Are you ready? Form factor, the build quality, the focal range of both the sets, sharpness, aberration, colour rendition, minimum focus, more lens breathing interestingness, saturation, bokeh, contrast, squeeze factor differences, this is, is. And once again, we can't discuss anamorphics without discussing flares. Flares. We're not going through this again, are we? Do you want some chicken? Give me five. Goodbye, let's get some chicken. <laughs> There'll also be one or two with 10 tips and insights in there for your viewing pleasure. That's a lot, so it's time to cut through the bullshit. Let's get on it, roll the titles. So the time has come, full set of Surui's, full set of Vazans. Let's have a fight. Fighting out of the orange corner, we have the defending budget friendly micro four thirds anamorphic champion of the world, standing three lenses tall and weighing in at $8,950 and supporting a 1.8 time front optical squeeze across the 28, 14, 65 millimeter lens set, the Venom Vazen. And fighting out of the blue corner, we have the unrivaled budget friendly anamorphic contender. Also standing three lenses tall and weighing in at a slender $2,247 at the time of this bout. Spotting a 1.33 front optical squeeze across the 24, 35, and 50mm lens set the sharp shooter, Surui! Surui? 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 Is that racist? So just like the Vazans, we've now got a three lens set. This is a very interesting time in this space. You can almost buy four of these for the price of one of these. I've already established that the Vazans are within the price range. Great build quality. They've got all the assets you'd expect from a cinema lens. Yes, there are some inconsistencies with the aperture, the focus rings, general size of them, the front threads, but for the price range, great. So up first, build quality and form factor. So as they chance the same for the 28 millimeter Vazon as they do for the big brother and sister, the 40 and the 65, that is four times more expensive than that. But are these four times cheaper? That, my friends, we're gonna find out. So wait then. The 28mm is as near as damn it, exactly the same as the 35mm Surui. Literally, there's like tenths of a gram difference. I've weighed them. Uh, then the 24, the new one, that is slightly heavier. And then the 50 is noticeably lighter. All three of these are, of course, much, much, much lighter than the 40 and the 65. And yes, in terms of gimbals a wee bit less they all fit and balance great including the Vazen 28 whereas the Vazen 40 millimeter and 60 millimeter will break the neck of your weeble so fast you'll need to give it milk if you've seen the Vazen video you'll already know that my final verdict when it came to the gears um, yes although they are very smooth I felt that they're a little bit too stiff in the focus ring and a little bit too free in the aperture ring and this is where these guys blew me away. Uh, I mean, they're all the same, I'm just holding this one for now because it's actually got a proper focus ring on it. The focus ring, again, smooth, hard stops, which is great. And the aperture ring is nice and stiff. It's exactly what you want. And the reasons why you want that is because you don't want your lens moving about too much when you're changing focus, because you change focus all the time during a shot. Occasionally, you also change aperture, but it's not as frequent. And the aperture ring is closer to the mount, so it, it doesn't matter as much. But with the focus ring, you want as little torque in there as possible. From the pictures, I assume that this grip would be rubber, but it's not. It's all aluminium. Surui so have knocked it out of the park. They're perfect. And check this out. Listen to that. Compared to that, that's on the actual focus rings. You can hear the difference. And on close inspection, the Surui's joints are just tighter than the Vazen. So if I had to compare the two, this is a tank, 
this is an armoured vehicle. There's just a lot more precision engineering going on in there. Are there better materials? I don't know. But there's definitely more precision. But where I'm struggling to get on board with the Saruis are some of the design decisions. Yes, they look nice, they're slick, they're very pretty. But that prettiness comes at a functional cost. So before I get into what I really like about these lenses, and I do really like these lenses, I'm going to have to list some of the design features that I don't believe add much cost to the production of them, but would make life so much easier on set, or in the jungle, or underwater, wherever. For future generations of these lenses, if we can just take the biggest one and then make them all the same size, they don't really have to be the same length. You've got to move the matte box anyway to get the lens out, so you've got to put the, so it's no big thing, but if we could just have the front diameters all the same. To be fair to the Surays, they've got some consistency. Unlike the Vaisons, the rings are all over the place and these are not pretending to be anything else but cinema lenses. They're all budget lenses, calm down James. So I did speak to Surui and, and I asked them why they're not the same size. They've made them smaller so they're easier to use on set. But they're not easier to use on set because now you've got to put an adapter on there so then you can use the same filters across the set. And all this can be sorted out just by having the same diameter across the range. And if it's a popular diameter that fits, you know, standard matte box sizes, then all the better. Although the focus and the aperture gears are beautiful to use, let's have some proper teeth on them. So the Surya 35 does come with an aperture and a focal gear. So as much as I don't like gear adapters, these actually work really well. It doesn't slide. It fits perfectly on the steel serrated edges of the existing ring. It works impressively well. But they only come with the 35. Why or why are they not shipping with these? I don't know because it would really make a difference. It'd be handy if they were all in the, in the right place. The location markings. The new 24s are actually on the bottom and on the side, but your 50, they're only on the side, not on the bottom. And on your 35, they're only on the bottom and not on the side. So you do find yourself when you're swinging lenses, a couple of seconds of just looking and going, mm, how do I get it on? Um, where if they're all in the same place, either or, obviously with a 24, they've really gone to town and put it on both, which is good. Maybe I'm just being fickle, but the reason why I'm being a little bit pedantic over it is because they're just design things. They don't really have any cost implications. All this said, you've got to remember that these are a fourth of the cost of one of these. These are a third of the cost of the next tier, which are a third of the cost of high-end lenses. So we really are quite lucky to have lenses that can do what these lenses can do at these price points. So that brings us on to markings, and this is where Vaison really do have Surrey Pit. They are big, they're bright, they are in the right place. Where the Surreys, they're very small. They do give you Imperial, they do give you metric, that's great. But the Imperial is in red, and that's now on impossible to see at night or on a dark set. I'd say pick a side, make them bigger. Where Surrey have evidently save some money. They are an f-stop as opposed to a t-stop for the Vaisons. Now if you want to know the difference between t-stop and f-stop it's very very simple. A t-stop basically means that the transmission of light for that lens has been measured, a certification if you will, where an f-stop it's calculated based on the size of the aperture to what you should be getting in terms of transmission. The markings on these are worked out, the markings on these have been tested, or at least it should be. But we'll get a little bit more into Vaison's tea stops later on. So in summary then, on that big long section on ergonomics and build quality, the Suris, although not perfect, they have far better consistency than the Vaison's. It's hard to know which one's tougher, but the Suris are seemingly better engineered than the Vaison's. The Vaison's, besides the consistency, they do have more cine lens attributes. The Suris, although they do have some identity issues, the execution is super impressive. So focal range and sensor coverage. The Vaisons do have more breadth in the focal range than the Saruis, but there's not a lot in it. 
Keep those squeeze factors in mind. You're going to get a wider field of view from the same focal range the larger the squeeze factor by the factor of the factor. For instance, the Vasion 28mm at 1.8 times squeeze is actually wider than the 24mm Surui because it's a 1.33 times squeeze. The Surui is the 24 to 50 roughly converts to 18 to 35 mil and with the Vasons the 28 to 65 roughly converts to 15 mil to a 36 mil but now you've got to take into consideration the size of your sensor the shooting modes of your camera crop factors all that stuff but that brings us nicely onto the question on everybody's lips sensor coverage now I have a micro four thirds camera and I have full frame cameras. Um, I don't have a super 35 camera, but I do believe, and I absolutely believe it from the size of that rear element that the series will comfortably cover a super 35. And I look forward to trying it out when Zcam send me some cameras. Vizen haven't been very forthcoming with the coverage circle size. I believe they do cover a 35 sensor or at least they cover some Super 35 crops. But because of that 1.8 times squeeze factor, it doesn't need to cover the entire sensor to produce a 2.4 by 1 image. The topic is way too complicated to cover both lenses and every single camera combo out there, but Zcam and Blackmagic do make good case studies in this space. For instance, the Zcam sensors are all larger than their Blackmagic counterparts. And the combination of the camera and lens will result in vastly different real-world focal length and pixel usage. In terms of resolution, the Vasons can get more out of the sensor on the E2s than the Surui's. But as soon as you go to sensors that are closer to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, then the Surui's have the advantage in terms of resolution. So are you ready for some actual consumer advice? Putting that aside for a minute, just because it's easier to explain. If you're only going to buy one lens, buy the 35 or the Vazen 40, because that is probably the most common lens that you're going to use. If you, however, you're planning to buy two or even all three of the lenses, then I would advise going with the wider lenses, either the 28 Vazen or the 24 Surui. Because as much as I don't like to say this, you can kind of achieve this with this. You can achieve this with this. Of course, the 35 is going to give you shallower depth of field, bigger bulkhead, all those kind of things. But effectively, as long as your resolution is high enough and you're really good with your sharps, and these lenses are sharp, but we'll get to that, um, then you can kind of achieve this with this, but you can't achieve this with this. Then, you own that, the second lens you would buy should be the 50. There are projects that you could shoot with them too. Or... With the Vasons, you want your 28 and your 65, because then at least you're getting your range. You're going to have a little bit more dynamic in your content. And then the last lens you want to buy is actually the first lens that you would buy if you was only buying one lens from either set, which would be either the 35 Surrey or the 40 Vazen. So there you go. Actual consumer advice. And if you've already made your mind up, then please go ahead click the link down below. You will find the links to the best deals on these lenses to get some nice discounts. So we're putting ergonomics, usability, and all that kind of stuff to one side, and now we're looking at image. What these guys produce, the sharpness, the distortion, the aberration, let's get into it. Sharpness then, I'm sure you guys have already heard my little speech. If you want a soft lens, you hire it, but you want to own sharp lenses. There's some more consumer advice there for you. It's just full of it. It's... Before I go into my next statement, it really needs to be said. The Vasons have got a lot more to deal with. There's a lot more anamorphicness to tame. So the Surui's have got less anamorphicness to tame, but they're four times cheaper. So maybe you'd expect them to balance out in terms of sharpness, but there's no contest. It's a 10-8 round. The Surui's are far sharper than the Vasons. Yes, there's some differences across the set, and not all of the images pin sharp, but I've got to admit, it's a 10-8 round. 
So let's quickly talk about aberration then. The aberration on the Vasons is not bad. It's not bad, it's pretty good within its immediate competitors, SLR Magic and the types. Now, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna put these next to these. Enough said. Let's move on. Distortion then, I'm sure you've heard my speech about the look and how all lenses are a compromise. Down at this level, you expect to see more of these things. Yes, of course, there's distortion. Distortion is one of those things though, even with high-end lenses, especially wider lenses, it's there, you see it. But for the most part, it passes the viewer by. By the time you actually shake out the squeeze ratio and the actual sizes of these lenses, it's to be expected because you're looking at effectively an 18mm lens. So you're going to get distortion and you're looking at effectively a 15mm lens. So you're going to get distortion. I think they, they both do a pretty good job and especially in the price range of these atom budget lenses. There were some things that I never intended to test for, but I noticed, so therefore tested for. Um, and that's contrast, color accuracy, transmission, and micro contrast. So let's get micro contrast out of the way. Micro contrast is one of those things that it makes your image seem sharper. It can also give your image more depth. For instance, Cook probably have some of the best micro contrast on the market for contemporary lenses. Um, micro contrast is something that you generally lose the more elements you, that your lens has and a lot of vintage lenses, the sharp ones at least, have really good micro contrast. And modern lenses, they, they tend to be a little bit flatter because there's, there's a lot of elements in there doing a lot of things to the light. It's not something that you'd expect a really low cost lens to kind of shine on. When you put them next to the Vasons, they certainly have a more contrast in the, which is something that you would expect from a lens with less glass in it or better quality glass or just better quality coatings. I don't know how they've done it. I'd love to combine the two images. Where the Saruis tend to show the price point a little bit is the consistency of the exposure and the tint across the range. The Vasons do much better, but they still have some quirks. In terms of exposure, I don't question the legitimacy of the T-stop, but I question whether I should question it. Does that make sense? That makes sense. But with the Saruis, yes, there are some inconsistencies with light transmission, with your exposure. Um, but they are f-stop lenses, so you're not expecting them to be as good as these. The colour reproduction inconsistencies through the lenses could be a pain in the ass once you're colour grading, but as long as you, you know, create a corrective look for each lens, you can get a really, really premium image out of them. Is the cost saving worth the messing around? Yeah. Let's talk about bokeh and squeeze factor then. The Vasons really do have the advantage with a 1.8 times squeeze in elongating that bokeh. On top of that, the Saruis do tend to have less bokeh distortion towards the center of the image. But the Vason 28 is more of a diamond shaped bokeh and it tends to triangulate towards the edges. The Suri 35 suffers from a little bit more edging than the Vazen 40mm and 65mm, but the Suri 50mm has a preferable balance of fringing and misshaping. Still, the Suri's are never going to punch up to the elongated bokeh of a 1.8 or a 2 times squeeze anamorphic. I believe the Suri's are hackable with a false iris. At this price point, why not? As long as you're happy with the light loss, because you will suffer some light loss, how much can the parts be? What's the worst that can happen? You damage one atom budget lens. You can buy 80 of these for the price of one Ari Anamorphic Master Prime. 80. Think about that. An Ari Master Prime isn't 80 times better than the lens in my phone. Well, maybe it is 80 times better than the lens in my phone, but it's not 80 times better than one of these. It's time to talk about minimum focus. We have the Surui and the 35, which is way better than the Vazen 65, but as near as it may as well be the same as the 40. 
and the Saruri 24mm is considerably shorter than the lot by nearly 20 centimeters. So there you go, it's black and white. The Saruris generally are better. Lens breathing, right, well, with the Vazons we discovered that there's some lens breathing interestingness that the 28 breathes in the opposite direction to the 40 and the 65. Um, and it's no surprise they use a different synchro, etc., etc. They focus in a, in a different way. Um, and we've got a similar thing going on with the Saruis. They don't all breathe in the same way. The Saruis 50 and 35 millimeter and the Vazen 28 millimeter breathe in the opposite direction to the Saruis 24 millimeter and the Vazen 40 millimeter and 65 millimeter. So there you go. And breathing is one of those things that you just have to accept. Um, especially with anamorphic lenses and to be fair the breathing's not too bad um, some of the lenses were better than some of the Vazons some of the Vazons were better than some of the Suruis um, you can see the results so coming into the round they're all still breathing they're all still in the fight I'd say Suruis winning though we've reached the point that for some of you is the only reason that you're even considering any of these sets of lenses Blurs. If you're a fan of blue streaks with the series, you're in luck. For myself, for most of the stuff that I shoot, I'm trying to manage the flares. Uh, thankfully, the flares on the series for both these sets is, is quite easy to manage. My personal favorite is the Vazen 28 with its orange flare. But the blue flares are highly desirable, and for an atom budget, you can get more flared up than Jim Jeffries' hemorrhoids. With the Vazens, although the 28 is different with its more orange flare, the consistency of the shape and size of all the flares across the set are very good. With the Saruis, the consistency is not quite the same throughout the set, but there's some really strong secondary flares, which are actually really nice. And if you get the angle right, you get this really nice shimmer in the corners, which I've not seen in the Vazons. So yeah. They all flare. You can see the results. You, you don't need me to tell you about them. It's a very visual thing. <laughs> Have a look. This hurts a little bit because, no it doesn't. I'm glad I own the Vazens. Um, the 1.8 times squeeze does give you some things that the Saruis just, they, they can't. Image wise, you arguably get a superior image out of these than you do out of these. Who wins the fight? If the title is for the best budget anamorphic lens, because it all depends. Saru so won this though. They won, didn't they? I would use these. I would use these on a documentary shoot. Or you, you're making something where it might be a bit sketchy, it might be a bit dangerous. You're not going to cry for a week if you damage one of these and have to replace it. So that about wraps it up. It all depends on what your usage is. Um, and it, in some instances, it really doesn't. The Saruis are just they're better. And if you do want to buy any of these lenses, go down below. You might find a link that will save you a few quid. I'll be doing what I can behind the scenes to fetch you more exclusive content. So there you go. Hit the subscribe button, ring the bell. I'm out of here. Be good. Stay safe. Ciao. some chicken.